Welcome to my channel on the best of fantasy. Today I'm doing not one, but two tags. I am doing the finally fall book tag and the end of the year book tag. I am combining tags. I have no idea if I'm allowed to do that or not, but well, we're just gonna see what happens here. And I was tagged by Abby Salter for the end of the year tag, and I was tagged by Joanna for the finally fall book tag. And I will include links to their videos in the description below. Now, combining these two tags, I have two reasons for it essentially. One is I'm terribly busy lately and I haven't had a lot of time to make videos and be on booktube. So uh, it's just that time of year at work. I'm doing a lot of grading and that sort of thing. This is normal. Uh, lots of uh, responsibilities there. So, um, you know, I am doing my best to keep up with things. Uh, and then just combining these tags helps me a little bit. Uh, so the other reason is it maximizes my ability to use the word autumnal. And I recently learned that this is the favorite word of Alan from the Library of Alexandria, the word autumnal. He said that he loves this word. So I'm going to use it as many times as possible. We're going to maximize the autumnalness, the autumnalosity in this video. <laughs> so um, yeah, there are lots of very uh, autumnal questions here. So um, and it, it is an interesting thing, actually. The um, What I'm finding is that a lot of my fellow American booktubers are having some interesting reactions to the word autumnal and autumn in general. So I thought I would go a little bit into the origins of the two words. Now of the two words, autumn as being used in English is the older. It goes back, there are examples in the Oxford English Dictionary of the use of autumn going back to the 14th century as the third season of the year. Chaucer uses the word, in fact, autumn. Uh, but the word fall is also a very old and respectable usage. And this is the word you hear most often here in the United States, as opposed to autumn, which is most often used over in the UK on the other side of the pond. So, you know, the word fall, though, as I'm saying, it, it is a fairly respectable use of the word. I have here my copy of the Oxford English Dictionary. This is the compact edition. In other words, there are nine pages squeezed onto every page of this book. So I don't know if you can see that or not, but there are nine pages there on each page and you have to read it with this magnifying glass. So the word fall goes back to the 16th century, at least we have examples of it. And interestingly, it was known as not simply fall, but it was called the fall of the leaf. So spring, summer, the fall of the leaf, and winter. I think that's incredibly poetic, so I kind of like using it that way. And as I said, there are uses of this word going back to the 16th century. So both are perfectly respectable ways of referring to the third season of the year. But because Alan loves the word autumnal so much, I'm going to use autumnal whenever I can. So. <laughs> Let's get on with it anyway here. The finally fall book tag. Um, so here are the questions. Number one, I'm going to read the question. In the fall, uh, the air is crisp and clear. Name a book with a vivid setting. Wow. Well, so I just recently read Dune and boy, does that one, that has one heck of a vivid setting, I would say. It might not be fall-like, there aren't any trees there, but boy, is it vivid. Uh, it is uh, a, a book where setting is almost a character in the story. So I'm going with Dune as the first thing that sprang to my mind, probably because I read it not so long ago and saw the film as well. I have some videos on all that. Um, so, but yeah, that's, that's what I'm going with, Dune. Number two, nature is beautiful, but also dying. Name a book that is beautifully written, but also deals with a heavy topic like loss or grief. So I have the perfect answer for this. In my opinion, it is Ursula Le Guin's A Wizard of Earthsea. For me, that book is beautifully written. I, I deeply admire Ursula Le Guin's prose. I think she is a master of the craft. One of my 
favorite examples of great pros in fantasy. Also, Wizard of Mercy is fundamentally a story about uh, reconciling oneself with death, in my opinion. That is one way of reading A Wizard of Mercy. I've never read a more beautiful uh, story on the topic of acceptance of death. And I just find that to be so compelling, so beautifully done in A Wizard of Mercy. So that is my answer to number two. Number three, fall is back to school season. Share a nonfiction book that taught you something new. Okay, well, I, there's, I have so many possible answers to this question. The first one to spring to mind, though, maybe this is a pun on the word mind, uh, but it's Robert Sapolsky's Behave. is essentially about the brain and why we do what we do, and he is a neuroscientist. Um, and if you at all want to uh, cling on to the notion that we have free will, then you probably should not read Behave. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he goes into all kinds of other fields besides neuroscience as well to delve into this question of, I guess, free will. Um, and the answer is, um, n well, if you want to have free will, it's not exactly an uplifting answer, I think, but it's a very interesting read, nonetheless. So, number four, in order to keep warm, it's good to spend some time with the people we love. This is very true. Name a fictional family or household, or friend group that you'd like to be part of. Well, recently I finished reading uh, all of John Gwynne's books in The Banished Lands, so I'm going to answer with The Order of the Bright Star. I would love to be part of The Order of the Bright Star, especially if they were to give me access to the magic, the earth magic. That would be so cool. I'm sure I would be worthy of the earth magic, don't you think? <laughs> I, I would hope so. We'll see. I would try to be responsible with it, I'm sure. So yeah, there's my answer to uh, number four. Number five, the colorful leaves are piling up on the ground. Show us a pile of fall-colored spines. Well, that's a nice uh, aesthetically-minded autumnal question. Uh, however, I'm going to offer a, a slightly different response to it because I just feel like it. I'm going to offer a different autumnal aesthetic experience. Uh, rather than the visual one that, that is being asked for, I'm going to read a poem, my favorite fall poem. This is Shakespeare's sonnet number 73. So if you'll bear with me, I will read it here from my collected works of William Shakespeare. And here we go. That time of year thou mayst in me behold, when yellow leaves or none or few do hang. Upon those boughs which shake against the cold, Bare ruined choirs where late the sweet birds sang. In me thou seest the twilight of such day, As after sunset fadeth in the west, Which by and by black night doth take away, Death's second self that seals up all in rest. In me thou seest the glowing of such fire, That on the ashes of his youth doth lie, as the deathbed whereon it must expire, consumed with that which it was nourished by. This thou perceivest, which makes thy love more strong, to love that well which thou must leave ere long." Ah, such a beautiful poem. And of course you can see the metaphors, fall being that time of year, which reminds us of the, well, the autumn, the autumnalness of our own lives that time of year, that time of our lives when we're looking back on things and, and probably missing uh, friends we've lost along the way, family and that sort of thing. Um, so it's a bit melancholy, this one, but that's what fall is, right? It's beautiful and melancholy because it reminds us of life and it reminds us of death. So yes, uh, indeed, you have the yellow leaves or none just hanging on to the boughs of the tree. And the, these boughs are compared to the bare ruined choirs. Of course, in the 16th century, Henry VIII had seized all the monasteries and taken all the lead roofs uh, away. And so you had a lot of ruined churches dotting the, the English countryside. And so many of them were falling into decay. And he's comparing the bare boughs of the leaves to the, the, the choirs, are the, that part of the church where the choir would have sung. Uh, except there's no roof now and no choir. So <laughs> you can see there's sort of a haunting imagery there as well. And the, the, the birds singing there, a contrast of life in death there. Beautiful stuff, right? 
And again, twilight of the day being again reminiscent of the, that time of life uh, when we're looking back and, and feeling our mortality. And sunset as well. All these are, you know, of course, uh, all commonly associated with the same thing. Which by and by, black night doth take away. Black night being, of course, the metaphor for death. Death's second self that seals up all in rest, indeed. And I love the last image here of the glowing fire, which is, is, is almost gone out. It's, there are ashes and embers just left. Just a bit of a glow there and not much longer to go. Uh, uh, such a, a potent image of the life force ebbing away. And yet, ironically, all of this leads to the perception of the dear one, the one who is aging. This thou perceivest, which makes thy love more strong. So the fact that we're about, that uh, you might lose me, that I'm in this, this autumn of my life, only makes me more precious to love that well, which thou must leave ere long. It's about, yes, it's about death, but it's about the preciousness of life. So there we are, beautiful fall poem by none other than the bard. Okay, moving on with the, uh, with the questions number six. Fall is the perfect time for someone, some, sorry, for some storytelling by the fireside. Share a book wherein somebody is telling a story. All right, well, there are so many great ones that we could do. I happen, however, to be reading at this moment, well, not at this moment, but, you know, these days, I am reading Tall the Hound by Stephen Erickson. And that is a story with a narrator, none other than the wonderful Krupp. What a nice autumnal figure for Alan to appreciate. <laughs> Krupp. <laughs> so, yes, indeed. Yeah, Toll the Hounds by Stephen Erickson is my answer to that one. Number seven, the nights are getting darker. Share a dark, creepy read. Well, I'm in a Malazan mood, I think, because I'm going to answer... Night of Knives by Ian Esselmont. This is the first book in novels of the Malazan Empire that has some of the best atmosphere I've ever seen established in a book of that length, too. It's just incredible how great he is at atmosphere. And it is, it is dark and creepy, and the horror elements are probably stronger in that particular Malazan book than in almost any other, I would say. So, yeah, that's my answer to that one. Number eight, the days are getting colder. Name a short heartwarming read that could warm up somebody's cold and rainy day. Well, the first one I thought of was The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien, which is definitely a heartwarming read for me, dripping with nostalgia. It is uh, one of my favorite books to look back on, so many memories associated with it, uh, so many vivid, wonderful moments from my life associated with that book. So yeah, that would be my answer to number eight. So moving on to number nine, fall returns every year. Yes, indeed it does. The cyclicality of all this is just uh, so momentous. Name an old favorite that you'd like to return to soon. Ah, well, I think the answer to that for me is going to be Lord of the Rings. It's been a while. I used to reread it just about every year, and it's probably been, I don't know, five, six years since I read Lord of the Rings. So I am due for a reread of Lord of the Rings, and that is certainly uh, a classic old favorite for me. And finally, fall is number 10. Fall is the perfect time for cozy reading nights. Share your favorite cozy reading accessories. I, I, I'm not sure I know what that means. Uh, reading accessories. I mean, uh, <laughs> I read... I read um, in bed with a pillow to rest the book on. So maybe my pillow to rest my book on. There, that's what I'm going with. And now we are transitioning into the end of the year. The end of the year book tag, that is. It's a perfect segue, right? From the fall one to this one. So all right, here we go. Question number one from the end of the year book tag. Are there any books you started this year that you need to finish? Um... Uh, well, the book that I'm reading right now, I guess, right? Told the Hounds. Uh, I also would like to finish, you know, if if things go really, really well. I might finish the Malazan books this year as well. Uh, both the Malazan Book of the Fallen and Novels of the Malazan Empire. We'll see. Might be a wee bit optimistic, but uh, it's a nice goal. Um, so that's how I'll answer that. Number two, do you have an autumnal book? Autumnal to transition into the end of the year. 
Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what autumnal book is, but I did have in October some books that I thought were sort of October-y, um, scary season a little bit, maybe. I had some Dresden Files stuff going on. I read a vampire book. So I tried my best to get into the spirit of things there uh, with the autumnal book transition. Uh, <laughs> So anyway, at least I got to say the word autumnal again. And number three, is there a new release you're still waiting for? Short answer, no. The, the two releases I was most excited for this year were both, I think in the fall, maybe, I think that actually the first was just at the end of summer, technically speaking, and that was The Wisdom of Crowds by Joe Abercrombie. I was very excited about that. The other one that I was so excited to read and I just read is The God Is Not Willing by Steven Erickson. So I have read them both, um, so I'm not waiting for them any longer. But if I had done this a week ago, I could have said um, the, the Erickson book. But I read it, so there we go. Number four, what are three books you want to read before the end of the year? Oh, well, I already said that, sort of. I mean, I'm going to read the Malazan books. I'm going to start uh, Daniel Abraham's Long Price Quartet. Uh, so probably I'll get the first two of those in before the end of the year as well. I also really, really want to finish at least book four of the Dark Tower series, Wizard in Glass. That has been calling me. I need to get to it. The only reason I haven't done it sooner is it's not part of a buddy read or anything like that. So I prioritize the buddy reads, but I really want to read it. And I think I will probably in early December. So yeah, I think I more than answered that one. And number five, is there a book you think could still shock you and become your favorite book of the year? Not just my favorite autumnal book, but my favorite book of the year. Um, I don't think so. I think I, I have, as far as I can anticipate, I mean, I, I do anticipate that I'll really enjoy the Long Price Quartet. Um, so we'll see about that. But other than that, uh, pretty sure I know what my favorites are. I'll have a top five video before the end of the year to uh, talk about them. And if you've been following the channel, you probably have some guesses. Uh, but uh, no, I don't think so. Nothing that I haven't read yet. So we'll see though with the Long Price Quartet. Maybe I'm, I'm going to love that. I anticipate that I, I will definitely enjoy them. So we'll see. And uh, number six, have you already started making plans, reading plans that is, for 2021? Yeah, heck yeah. I mean, I, I, uh, I have lots of ambitious goals for 20, 2021. I must have, okay, I copied this from something. It's 2022. Sorry about that. 2020, I mean, 2021 is almost over. Uh, 2022, I think is what it should be. Uh, and yes, uh, I do have lots of plans for 2022. I, I hope to do a, a, a lot of reading in the realm of the elderlings, for example. I hope to read some David Gemmel. And a lot of the stuff I'm going to be doing with my buddy A.P. Canavan from A Critical Dragon. And lots of other stuff, I'm sure. So that, I, I will conclude these two tags. I've probably gone on long enough. And uh, I appreciate you guys watching this. And I hope you've enjoyed some of my answers to these questions. Perhaps you enjoyed the poetry reading as well. The fall poetry reading that puts us in the right, I think, frame of mind for this time of year. So... Until next time.